Hey guys, so today I'm going to be sharing with you this sugar-free chocolate pie recipe. This is something I made recently and it turned out so delicious. It was very light and creamy, but it didn't have a lot of sugar or carbs. So I'm just starting off by toasting some blended up. So I'm just starting off by toasting some blended up chopped pecans and some almond flour. I'm going to be toasting this in a pan for about 10 minutes until it is a light brown color. I definitely should have used a larger pan, but the size that I used did work. I'm also going to be chopping up some butter into these cubes and then melting it in the microwave in a small glass bowl. I'm going to add that to a larger mixing bowl with some sugar-free sweetener. I'm then going to add in the toasted almond flour and pecans after they have turned light brown. Once I've mixed everything up, I'm going to press it into this large glass baking tray. I'm also going to make sure to coat the sides of the tray as well as best as I can. I'm then measuring out some sugar-free chocolate pudding powder. I ended up adding more of this powder later on because I wanted the flavor of chocolate to stand out more. I'm combining it with some heavy cream. I used about three cups and then later on after I add more of the pudding, I will be adding I will be adding a whole tub of some zero sugar whole whip whipped cream topping. I first measured out 2.6 ounces of the pudding mixture. I ended up adding some more later, but that is what I started out with. And then I'm adding three cups of this heavy cream and I'm beating it on medium until it is nice and smooth. I then waited a little bit while I had the whipped, I then waited a little bit while the frozen whipped topping thawed out a little bit. The Cool Whip was a very hard texture that was not able to be mixed, but I was impatient and I added it into the mixture anyway, hoping to break it down with the beater. Ended up breaking down most of the Cool Whip while it was still somewhat frozen, but there was a few pieces that were still hardened. They ended up blending in perfectly with the dessert anyway, and you couldn't tell that they were there. After I added a little bit more of the chocolate pudding powder, the mixture thickened up in texture and it was a little bit tricky to mix. But once I added the whipped cream and it melted down a little bit, it made it the perfect consistency. It wasn't too thick, but it wasn't too runny either. Once the mixture is ready, I'm just going to be pouring it over top the crust that I had chilling in the fridge. I'm then going to be spreading it out with a rubber spatula and just making sure it evenly coats the entire dish. I'm then going to be mixing up the final topping with 4 ounces of cream cheese that is at room temperature, some sugar-free sweetener, 1 and 1 fourth cups of heavy cream, and then I'm just going to add a splash of vanilla. I'm just going to be whipping that up with the beater on a medium speed, and then I'm going to be covering that over top of the chilled chocolate pudding mix. shaving a Lily's low sugar chocolate bar. After I've evenly spread this whipped cream cream cheese topping over the pudding mix as a decorative topping and just a little bit of extra texture and chocolate flavor. This turned out absolutely amazing. Thank you guys so much for watching this chocolate brownie recipe. 
This is a perfect low sugar, low carb alternative dessert, especially for people who have diabetes and need to avoid spiking their blood sugar too much. So I hope you guys give this recipe a try. Thank you so much and I will see you soon in the next video.